Welcome back to another video. I am Tad. You're watching Tips for Technicians. And today we have an error code on this outdoor unit made by Samsung. The error code is E337. And we're going to be using a multimeter to check a 10 kilo ohm sensor. I'm going to show you how to diagnose with your meter, the sensors, what can happen with this outdoor unit. And this is just one video of one type of problem. I've got several videos. Check out my playlist, Tips for Technicians. I'm going to turn the camera around and show you with a meter how we check the old part. I've got the new part, so we're going to compare the resistance readings that we find. And if you guys have any questions, leave those in the comments. Definitely hit the subscribe button, the like button. Share this with your other fellow tech friends or beginners that may be entering the field so that they can have this information brought to them. All right, without further ado, let's start diving in. This is the PCB here for this outdoor unit. And as you can see, we've got these sensors, right? I got one sensor, two sensors, three sensors. And you can tell I've got a uh, liquid gas pipe connection, liquid gas pipe, liquid gas pipe. So this unit is a two ton and it can handle up to three indoor units. Now, I don't have three indoor units on this. I actually only have two. I have a ducted air handler in the crawl space underneath connected to some duct work. And then in the loft upstairs, I have a wall mount air handler. All right. Now, if you look on this board right here, this blue plug Molex, it says EVA out. All right. Now, when you have an E337, which I'm going to show you, I looked up the manual and took a picture, a screenshot. I'm going to show you the description. Uh, you have an evaporator outlet sensor that's failed. So what you do is you pull this plug off. All right. Now make sure that you definitely turn the power off. Okay. Wait 15 minutes. I want you guys to be as safe as possible. You pull this plug off here and these three sensors are 10 kilo ohm sensors. Okay. That means on your meter. Okay. You put your meter to ohms. All right. And you're going to measure these sensors and you're going to have a 10 kilo ohm reading. You see how we've got 335? It says E335. That means evaporator outlet sensor open or shorted since I pulled this off. Okay, so it's already throwing an error code up because I've pulled that uh, plug loose. So, all right. You, I'm going to ask you guys if you find anything a little unusual with the readings that you see that I get here in just a second. All right. So I've got the plug here. We've got three sensors coming into this plug. One sensor has two red wires. One has two yellow wires. One has two blue wires. We've got a meter. I've got it set to ohms. And I want to tell you that all three of these sensors, since the line temperatures are the exact same, then that means that the sensor should be reading the same resistance. Okay? So if you don't have a resistance chart and you're not able to check um, the resistance chart, then an inconsistency like I'm going to show you is going to be a very easy identifier for the sensor that has failed. All right, so you can see that pretty well here. All right, it says OL. Put my meter leads together. Okay, so that means our meter leads are good. Now, we're going to go to sensor number one here, okay? Sensor number one. Should be in the 10 kilo ohm range, 19.2, good. Nice and steady, go to the next one. Yellow to yellow, 19.1, good. Now, sensor number three. 3.5, you see that? That little inconsistency right here, this tells me this, this evaporator three sensor is bad. So that's why I ordered new sensors and I've got them here, see? So I've got uh, sensor number two, and this one right here, this yellow one was sensor number, uh, that was sensor number two. So sensor number one, sensor number two, and then the blue one, which was bad, was sensor number three. Now, we're gonna check the new one, all right? Real quick here, all right. So we're going to sensor number one, 18.4. All right, sensor number two, 19.5 so that's pretty close now sensor number three 19.4 so all three of the sensors read good oh after reading those thermistors in the field now we're going to go to the 10 kilo ohm chart it's the best way for us to figure out 
which sensor is bad. This is the best way to identify what sensor's readings are not right. So we know what our temperature is. Outdoor, it was 48 degrees. Our line temperature was about 48 degrees. And we had readings like 19.3, 19.4. And then one thermistor was reading three. So I want you to know that there is a certain temperature and there's a certain resistance that you should have. There's a minimum, a maximum, a centered resistance that you should read. And I knew that the temperature was 48 degrees outside. So I know what reading I was looking for. Now we're going to look at the 10 kilo ohm chart and I'm going to be able to show you at what resistance, what temperature you should be at. So let's take a look. I'm going to turn the camera and we're going to look at our resistance charts. All right. So it says right here, 10 kilo ohm chart, indoor, outdoor, air and pipe thermistors. So if we look right here on this chart, we're going to have Fahrenheit. Okay. Fahrenheit and then about 48 degrees. Okay. And then this first row is minimum kilo ohm reading, uh, centered, and then maximum, okay? So at 48 degrees, 18.03, and then maximum 19.38, we had about 19.4, and it was about 48 degrees. So this would, this would be the reading that I was looking for, okay, in this range right here. Now, if you look at this chart over here, we had a reading that was three on one of them and that would be right here, right? Three. And that's 126 degrees. It was cold out there. The line temperature was nowhere near 126 degrees, but one of those sensors was reading three, okay? So I know that sensor is bad because if all the other sensors are reading around 18 to 19 and the temperature outside was 48 degrees, the line temperature is 48 degrees, then this would be the best way for me to figure out what sensor is good and what sensor is bad. So check out your 10 kilo ohm chart, your thermistor chart. Um, if you guys like this video, go check out more of my videos. Uh, I'm going to show you this too, real quick. 337, E337. This is error code definitions table. E337 is uh, the outlet temperature sensor TB2 of port number two and FJM outdoor unit has separated from the pipe. And then when we pulled those sensors off, we had 335, which is outlet temperature sensor of port number zero and FJM outdoor unit has separated from the pipe. So the best way to find out if your sensors are bad is using this chart. We got a new set of sensors here and I went ahead and ordered the new PCB. Okay. And this plug right here is the evaporator outlet plug, okay? And there's actually four spots for four sensors, but we've only got three units that can be hooked up to this. So three sensors is what we're dealing with. I would definitely recommend going ahead and ordering this board. Um, I've got my little tack switches there, K1 for test operation. When you get the unit fired, um, you have, you know, auto addressing features. So it's nice. It'll automatically recognize the amount of indoor units. And you need to set, set your rotary dial. Make sure that uh, if it's two units, it needs to be set for two, okay? And if it's five units, it needs to be set for five. Of course, we don't have that here. All right, guys, um, I'm going to go ahead and change the sensors and uh, get the unit fired up and get it working. But I got a new PCB on, I've got a new sensor, and when I started the unit up, I've got an error code E201, which means the number of indoor units is mismatched. So what I need to do is I need to enter the pipe check operation. I need to make sure the dial is set for the amount of indoor units that I have. And I've had a couple issues with this in the past. It's very easy to get over. 
All you have to do is you just set the dial. If you have two units, set it to two. If you have three units, set it to three. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a pipe check, which is K1. You hit K1 and you're going to enter the test operation. You're going to pipe check. It's going to be able to figure out how many units we have hooked up to this and it's an auto address feature. Now the new equipment, the new FJMs that just rolled out here in 2020, uh, 2021, we have no dial on there. So you don't have a dial, you have the KTAC switches and these one, two, three, and four, these switches are used not only to pump the unit down or to test heating or to test cooling function, but it's also to auto address or manual address the equipment, okay? So that right there is the TAC switches. E201 is number of indoor units mismatched. Try setting the dial, try pushing the K1 button, if that doesn't work, call tech support. Samsung has very good support, and I really appreciate having somebody as a line of defense, as a, uh, a backup situation uh, that I can call and I can rely on them. So that's why I, I sell Samsung. Anyways, guys, I'll have this thing up and running. We'll be in good shape. Make sure you set the dial properly. You um, unplug the disconnect and disconnect power when you're got your hands in here, you're changing parts. That's yeah, I just wanted to tell you what error code E337 was, which is an open or shorted sensor. And you're able to use a meter, set it to ohms, measure each sensor at a time, check your resistance chart, make sure you know the temperature outdoors or the temperature on the line. If the sensor is measuring the temperature of the line, you need to make sure you know what that temperature is. Why? Because you're going to be more accurate with checking the resistance charts and the values that you're measuring. So guys, easy problem. So easy. And then you've got OLP sensor, discharge sensor, outdoor ambient sensor, coil sensor. Those are a, a separate set of sensors on this unit. So you definitely need to know how to check the sensors out in the field. This is a problem you can run into and it'll shut the equipment down and then you can no longer have your equipment running, guys. Thanks for watching and remember, I'll keep you cool if you let me.